Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Crucible Boot Camp. I'm your host, Keen Koala, and today our theme is Reload Your Damn Gun. Uh, we're going to be watching a Defender Titan on a Rumble match on Asylum, and his loadout is a Pulse Rifle and a Shotgun. So pretty standard for a Rumble match. But again, remember our theme, Reload Your Gun. Seriously, man. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off the game on an outer spawn. So one thing I noticed that Ad Tenant does, who's the user that sent me in, in this, is he waits for people to kind of show up to fight. Um, that was, I'll depict this particular opening engagement where if someone is pushing you and you have a shotgun, remember that if someone is pushing you, it's very easy for you to punish them for that with a shotgun. Even especially if they're going to shoulder charge you like that, because uh, the way the hit detection works is if you shotgun them as shoulder charge comes out, normally they die before it hits you. Uh, so that'll actually, re the end result of that kind of engagement will actually be uh, them dying and you staying alive, as opposed to a trade where you try to go for your melee. Spawning on the other side of the map now, again, we want to push to where the, the action is. The action's always going to be in the center of the map. So that's either going to be Atrium or uh, Top B. We don't really want to be waiting around on our spawn because no one's going to spawn near us. And everyone else is moving to the center of the action as well. That's just a nice stick on his opponent's part, but that engagement could have turned out differently if you were just a little bit more aggressive with your pushing. It's okay to wait for people to come to you, but in Rumble, remember that we want our time to engagement to be as little as low as possible. Especially with a shotgun, we should just be try aiming to get in people's sp faces. And he's running Defender Titan, so as soon as we get that shotgun kill off, our no backup plans are going to proc, and we're going to be able to warrior the next guy because we have a, an overshield of, it's, I think it's 175 or 200 hit points. It's a lot. You can't be uh, headshotted out of it. So now he's moving to that center of the action again. Get some crossfire. There's another one there. A lot of, of Ad Tenant's engagements are, you can see he's slowly walking around this corner at head level. If there was a sniper on the other side, on the other side there, then you're just going to die as soon as you round that corner, or at least get body shotted, potentially get finished off. So keep, uh, keep note of where you're in, getting engaged from and where the enemy is going to after the engagement is done, especially in Rumble, because then you can go back to that same spot and deal with the person. You can see this guy's crouched and he's kind of behind that wall. You just spawned and you know he's behind the wall. He hasn't really gone anywhere. The last thing you want to do when you know where your opponent is is approach him in the exact same way. You always want to take a different route, even if it's just a slight variation. You notice that he went around the left side of uh, this little kiosk in, the, in his initial engagement. So you can do something as similar as going to the right or going on top. Or hiding out here and head glitching on the uh, on the bench. The last thing we want to do is engage in the exact same way, especially after you can't hear it, but you can hear that the guy just went invisible again. So we so we've engaged this guy twice in the same way. Uh, if I was if I was that tenant, I'm gonna especially spawning here. I'm just gonna leave him alone. If you are gonna approach him, you need to do it from a different angle, which he's doing, which is good. So he's trying to push to the action, but again, you just got to commit to going to someone. Can't kind of wait around and try to read your radar properly. So nice engagement there. He has an overshield. So the, the powerful thing about having overshield as a defender titan is that you can immediately start another engagement, even if you're weak, because that extra HP is really going to make it so that you're going to most likely either trade or potentially win the next engagement, as opposed to being primary down and immediately dying. In the situation where you're going to engage someone with a shotgun and they end up absolute, I normally like switching to my primary weapon to finish them off, as opposed to burning an entire another shot just to finish them when they, you know, they only need three or four pellets to die. 
Um, another thing that you should be doing, especially in these engagements, and we don't see this really uh, ever, because you're just kind of playing upright and very little sprinting, is you need to slide into people when you're shotgunning. Especially if you're going to engage. Like, you can be pushing this guy around the corner and slide here. You slide around that corner, and you're going to be able to see him peek before he's even ready for you. Luckily, he misses his shot, or that likely would have ended in you dying. But again, you see him here. This is your chance to sprint forward and slide. You have an overshield, so this is a very safe play, and it's going to put you in one-hit KO range. You always want to try to put yourself in one-hit KO range as quickly as possible. You don't want to fire from beyond it, especially as a Titan, because your melee only lunges four and a half meters. You're not like a, uh, a hunter, which is with blink strike, I believe it's six, and... Uh, with the normal war, uh, warlock, warlock is six meters, and stormcaller is twelve meters. So stormcaller is really the only one you can engage from this distance and get away with it with, with the follow-up melee. You want to be sliding there, and you're pretty much going to be in melee range as well if you slide as a titan. So now our overshield has run out, and we're looking look just looking for people to fight. When they're absolute like that and you've taken no damage, it's okay to push through a swarm grenade. It doesn't do that much damage. Okay, now that our bubble's up, we want to put our bubble in a place where we can quickly move back and forth from it. So when you're low on ammo in this situation... If we had popped bubble here, we would have overshield the push, right? And we can move back to it. We don't want to necessarily move into players as we're challenging them. When you challenge someone, uh, you want to keep in mind that your weapon has an effective range, right? It's And pulse rifles are most effective in mid-range. Um, not long range, not close range, but mid-range. So that means you want to keep them at mid-range and you want to challenge for mid-range. If they decide to push into you, that's when you switch to your shotgun or, you know, you finish them off with a melee, or prime them with a grenade, finish them with a grenade, whatever you want to do. But you don't want to push into people, because that's going to close the gap for if they decide to pull out a shotgun, they're going to turn around and trade with you, or just outright kill you. That's bad. We don't we don't want to trade in Rumble, because that's going to hurt our time between engagements. Uh, and again, now we only have three bursts, so we have to hit all basically all headshots to kill this guy in front of us. We also have a grenade and a melee up, and our super, just in case things go horribly, horribly wrong. But this engagement space where we're, we just killed our opponent, this is good. We want to we want to keep the space. We don't want to push into him without our shotgun ready uh, to finish this guy off in one hit range. Because by as you can see, by the time he takes out a shotgun, he's already in one hit range and his weapon isn't ready yet. So you want to change. You want to switch weapons when you're outside of that range, possibly even back skating or back jumping backwards. To create a gap in case your opponent is going to push into you with their shotgun. That's going to give you enough time to ready your weapon and counterattack. So that's one of those situations where it would have been in your best interest uh, to ADS as opposed to hip fire. But unfortunately, because you ADS or a hip fire didn't ADS, not all the pellets hit. But if that had happened at the beginning of the match, like I pointed out, it would have li likely resulted in a kill. So that's just kind of unlucky on his part. But that's the kind of thing that you need to be doing if someone's pushing you. So that was, that was a good play. It just kind of didn't end up quite how he wanted. Again, this is kind of a good play gone wrong. Uh, he took the shotgun shot, which is good, and he followed up melee almost immediately, which is also very good. But unfortunately, he missed all the entire shot completely. Um, but even though that ended up poorly, uh, I do want to point out that that was a good thing that you did. You didn't just, like, panic. You tried searching for him. You got the melee off. So it's not all bad. And as Defender Titan, your Force Barrier doesn't proc unless you kill them with your melee. So you, you don't need to really worry about uh, wasting your melee as a Defender Titan. Pause this real quick. All right, sorry about that. So really nice suppressor grenade here to 
deal with the hammer. Uh, if I'm trying to s challenge a hammer with a suppressor grenade, normally you want to dip back into cover so he can't counter, uh, just kill you before he gets suppressed. So this situation here, you see him pop a super. He's a little low on uh, slow on reaction, but that's okay. Um, luckily, the hammer titan isn't looking at him, so he's not going to immediately get shot. But what you want to do is you want to throw it about here when you can see him, right in the corner where he, th he throws it. But then you want to dip back into cover. And where's your cover right now? Well, there's the uh, entrance where you just came from through the door where your bubble is. You know you'll be, you know you'll be safe there. But unfortunately, that's a straight line shot for a hammer. Really, you want to dip behind this box to the left here. So keep in mind that you need to know where your cover is and where your escape routes are and how you're going to properly move around. So as soon as he hits that, he should be dipping left and crouching to not give his opponent a chance to kill him. He's very lucky that his opponent hit the box. But if you, could, you as you can see, if he was behind that box, he would have been completely safe. So now that you have your bubble up, the thing you want to do with your bubble is roam between it. You want to move out of it to challenge, especially when you're using Blessing like he is. And then after you, uh, after you engage, you want to move back to, get re to refresh the buff. Right there, that's a perfect example of why Blessing's really good. Because if he didn't have that overshield, he would have died. You can see he's absolute here. Even after he missed a couple of shots. Now remember when I said the theme... Is reload your gun, right? So you can see he has... He's down to half a clip now. So he has enough for one more challenge. He's going to refresh. He's going to go challenge this guy, right? He has his primary out. He's going to finish. Alright, again, this is your opportunity to reload your gun. Again, reload your gun. You have no ammo. Now now that you haven't paid attention to your ammo and you want to go challenge, you know that you're not going to have enough. Uh, you're not going to have enough to finish a fight. Even when you hit all headshots like that, a melee isn't going to finish them either. So now you have to get into melee range to try to, to shotgun them. That engagement could have been a, a lot cleaner if you just remember to reload your weapon. And this is something that's that's surprisingly common with a lot of people that I see. Um, either submit submit things to me or just, you know, ask me to check out their gameplay or whatever. A lot of people don't remember to reload the weapon after engagement. I understand it can get, you know, super intense. And you got to remember to do certain things. But as soon as you finish an engagement, you should be your your mind should be thinking of two things. Where can I hide because I don't want to immediately die? Because normally you're not going to be at full health. And two, when you do hide, reload your weapon. You just go sit there, check your surroundings, make sure you're safe, reload your weapon. Never reload your weapon, A, in the middle of a firefight, or B, out in the open. Because if you do end up reloading out in the open, you could potentially be engaged upon, and then you're just dead because you're in your reload animation. And... Uh, if you don't reload your weapon, obviously it's really bad because you can't continue to keep that time between engagements up. Again, now that you have low ammo, that was a perfect time for you to reload. Nothing is happening. We see he's trying to find someone. That was a good slide around that corner, but you don't want to... You don't want to seek targets. So... That's another example of why we have our, we reload our gun. Because in this, uh, in this situation here, where we pull out our primary and our opponent has half shield, if you have a full clip here, this person's dead. He has nowhere to go. He can jump upwards, but you have a line of sight on him. And he, he, he can't run fast enough to get around this corner if you have good enough gun skill before you just kill him outright. But had, because he didn't reload his weapon, you know he could potentially be caught. In the middle. Okay, now that you're in your bubble, you're completely safe in your bubble. Unless someone has a super. And, but if they have a super, they're probably going to rush your bubble anyway. But because you're completely safe, that essentially acts as cover. That's when you want to reload your weapon again. 
A really nice slide around the corner. Unfortunately, misses a shot, but that's what we want to be doing as a shotgunner. We want to be sliding around those corners to try to close that gap safely. Most people don't anticipate you to be on the ground. They anticipate you to be standing straight up. They don't anticipate you changing elevations. So that slide, perfect. All you really got to work on is uh, really aiming. Uh, you don't need ADS when you slide. Um, mainly because, yes, uh, when you ADS, the bullet spread does tighten. But the time it takes you to fully ADS as you slide could potentially kill you. And it's a lot easier to track your target when you're hip firing. You don't lose out a ton when you're in when you're at the point where you're touching the other person. And a slide shotgun is essentially going to get you close enough where you're going to touch the other person. Um, the only time you want to ADS during a slide is if you know they're going to be further, um, further out than, you know, right there in that one hit range, or maybe they're on the edge of one hit range. Mostly that happens when you're sliding uh, blindly around corners. That's when you want ADS. But if you know they're right, right there, you know, they're going to be right around the corner as you come around, stay hip fired, and that way you can track them properly to get your shot off. Even if it takes you an extra second to properly track them, I'd rather see you take an extra second to properly track them, end it in a trade, than you waste an entire bullet. Because special weapons are the most important thing, really, in this game. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't fire his weapon there. I think he meant to, and then he just kind of panic clenched and ended up meleeing. But do your best to really mash down on that fire button when you do those kind of engagements. So we read our, reload our weapon, and we're moving back around. So the traffic lanes on, on Asylum are pretty much, like I said, middle of the map. So either Atrium or Top B. So we want to move to them. And then he's trying to do a radar bait here, which is good. Unfortunately, you're not running sticky, so you want to throw your grenade a little bit lower. But again, you pull them around the corner. Okay, now this is an example of keeping your opponent at arm's length. Remember how I said that when you have a shotgun, you're dangerous at all uh, points of hit points? You know, no matter how close to death you are, you're always going to be able to one-shot someone with a shotgun. So what don't you want to do when someone is absolute and they dip around something? Even if you have a shotgun yourself, you don't want to push that person. Unless you know they're going to start regening. And if you do push that person, do not do it in a straight line. Never do it in a straight line. Lucky for you, our shotgun warrior didn't have a shotgun out. But if he did, you would be dead there. Now we're back to reloading a weapon after every engagement, which is good. Trying another radar bait here, but no one's around. As soon as you see someone, no no pings on your radar, don't, don't wait for pings to show up. Just go make them show up. That's what we want to be doing in Rumble. We want to be making people show up on radar so either they're pulling into us or we know where they are so we can push into them. You have to be aggressive. Sometimes overly so if you want to win the match. I know a lot of people want to get that Grimoire and the, the only way you're going to be able to get that Rumble Grimoire is if you're aggressive. You can go 23 and 23 and still win a match. Now we don't have shotgun ammo, so... And be patient when you push those corners. Trying to have another bait here. But the guy's boogied. He's gone into into cafe. So you had the perfect weapon for the engagement here with your shotgun out. You don't if you're gonna push into someone, don't switch to your primary if you're if you have the intention of pushing into someone. You gotta just commit to it. All you have to do is slide around this box, and then you're in one-hit range. That's really all you have to do. You can even prime with a grenade if you're really scared uh, about, you know, finishing, off, finishing them off immediately. But remember, we have an overshield. There isn't much that we should be afraid of. Really, the opponent is terrified of us. Whenever I see someone with a force, force barrier pushing me, uh, I probably need a change of underwear very shortly. But if you had your shotgun out there, that guy would be dead. Kind of lost, don't know where we are at this point, but right ourselves and we're pushing. So by staying straight up here and not slide challenging, not jumping, not really using the our cover to our advantage, uh, the enemy player has all the advantage when he pops back out of cover because we haven't moved. 
at all. If you're in this kind of an engagement and you miss three bursts and you're absolute, then you can just dip behind cover and regen. You have a shotgun, so if they push into you, you're potentially going to kill them. Your biggest worry when playing against another Titan is A, is are they a striker Titan? And B, do you think they have their... Uh, do they do they have their the grenade up? If you you can it's normally safe to assume they have their grenade up. Most titans always have a grenade for every engagement. If they run it, because most titans run max discipline, so you have to be careful of your positioning next to walls. So in this particular instance, uh, let's pull up the map real quick. In this particular instance, we are here, and our opponent is here on the grass. The lightning grenade that he throws will likely be here, right? Which means that the cone will go this way. Cone's pretty big, right? So if we pull back into cover, all we need to make sure is that we're pretty far away, even all the way back here. Then we're not going to get lightning grenaded. These are the little things you have to keep in mind when playing against certain opponents. Okay, but now that he's dipped back into cover, we pulled out into cover. That's bad. We always want to pull back into cover, not out of cover. Oh, now we've suppressed ourselves. So unfortunately, now that we've suppressed ourselves, we have no challenge on this golden gun, but we shouldn't be waiting around. We should still be looking to challenge someone else. Now that you're within likely one hit range, you want to take out your shotgun, which is good. He takes out his shotgun. He even gets the guy trying to crouch around. Again, push to those traffic lanes. You know someone's going to likely move to Atrium. So you should be in the center of Atrium. Nice shotgun melee. Someone's pushing you. Gets a double melee. Like it's unfortunate that he's missing these shots, but I like that he's taking him. You know, you don't have to hit every shot, but you need do need to take them. So, as you can see, he's just moving away from his bubble, engaging someone, moving back into his bubble. Which is good. You can see yeah, he hasn't run very much, won very much rumble, so hopefully he's, he can win some more after this. But So, some big takeaways for me after watching this were his, very, his play style is incredibly passive, right? He's kind of waiting for people to show up and then engaging them. When we play rumble... You can't afford to be passive if you're going to try to win, especially because, you know, obviously he's playing it to win because um, his Grimoire is low. So if we're doing that and we want to we wanna succeed, then we have to be aggressive. And we have to push towards people to get, to get those kills. Um, the whole point of playing Rumble is to work on your 1v1 engagements because most of your engagements are going to be 1v1, if not all of them. Um, it's going to be very rare for you to actually get in a legitimate two-on-one, and normally that's because uh, you get flanked from the same direction. Like, let's say you're in jungle here, and someone comes out from underneath parking, but then someone's coming around C. So that's that's a situation where you could potentially be engaged by two people at the same time, but that's mostly not going to happen. Normally the person that's going to come around C is going to try to attack the person closer to him. They're not going to be... Uh, Distracted by the guy that's further away. So, don't be passive. We want to be in their face. We want to be moving to the traffic lane, through the traffic lanes to where people are likely going to be, which is, you know, B here or Atrium. So, as long as we're in the center of these locations, we can see anyone trying to move in here. And in this case, it's this way here. Right? We want to be in these locations to deal with people. This is when you can be passive. If you want to play zone control, then you want to pick the zones where people are going to go. You don't want to pick this, you don't want to instantly be passive off spawn. 
Uh, you have to be very aggressive to be getting to secure these locations, and then you can be passive in protecting them. So if you want to be a pl passive player, that's fine, but you should still be aggressively seeking out uh, zones to control. Um, some mechanical things. Uh, he says he, I know that in, in his submission he says he plays a Warlock a lot. If you are going to play Titan more, you got to learn how to skate. That's really going to help you close the gap most of the time, uh, but more importantly, it's going to help you escape. Uh, the real power of Titan is not just gap closing, but also gap creation. You create a gap very, very fast, and you can run away very easily if you're a Titan. Uh, you can basically take one, one shot, say to yourself, hey, you know, I'm not really feeling this engagement. I don't think I'm going to win it. You could skate away. Um... You gotta work on slide shotgunning and being more comfortable engaging with a slide. Um, and that means hit firing more and tracking to, to help track your opponents better. Uh, when you, in this game, your most powerful weapons are your guns, right? Most of the time, uh, it's not your melee, uh, it's your it's your weapon or even your grenade. So that means you have to keep your opponent at a distance. So. Uh, if he's going to work on something fundamental, like a like um, a fundamental, it would be to keep your opponents at a distance and never really get in melee range unless you absolutely have to. And when you do get in melee range, you should be using a gun when you're there anyway. So in his case, if you're going to continue to use pull shotgun, um, which I would recommend, it's a good loadout. Uh, you want to follow up whatever you're shooting with a melee. Um, in this case, you want to follow up shotgun shots with, with your melee. You don't want to go for double melees unless you absolutely have to. Um, if, even if you melee first, it's still you're still most likely better off uh, as, as a Titan shooting your gun because of how crappy Titan lock-on is. Um, and that also means that you have to learn how to properly engage someone behind cover. So as we, we saw someone here, um, and we were in the middle of cafe on A, you can basically stay here or even come around to get a little elevation to see down onto them, as opposed to just pushing straight forward and potentially getting shotgunned yourself. Be creative in how you how you push people. Uh, it's almost always in your favor to push around than it is to push straight forward, because your opponent doesn't really normally your opponent doesn't expect that. Um, uh, all pretty much all the engagements we saw uh, here, or rather the majority of them, I'd say nine out of ten of them we're standing straight up so when you approach people you want to approach either jumping or sliding and that goes on any class um especially if you're a warlock you can you have a lot of power helicoptering or hovering over a door which is really good for baiting people especially if you're using a shotgun you can just hover over the door wait for them to come out and then just shotgun them when you're you know hovering above them and the final point i wanted to make which is kind of more general for rumble is you you don't just have five opponents in the game. You actually have six opponents in the game. Um, and this came up in this particular game, and I'm sure it comes up in a lot of people's Rumble matches, but that issue is the clock is also your opponent. It's not just the five people you're playing against. You also have to fight against the clock, and that's why it's so important that you keep your time to engagement down so low, because you don't want the clock to be actually be an issue. Because say in that particular match, he was down by, you know, 300 points, right? If there's 30 seconds left, it's not likely that you're just going to immediately rattle off three straight kills to win the match, right? You're more likely going to get one, maybe two, or be halfway through your second engagement by the time that time runs out, especially if you're a passive player. So you constantly have to keep in mind what the time is. Um, Rumble matches, I want to say, are like 10 minutes long. Uh, if it's 10 minutes, by 5 minutes, if you're not halfway to winning the game, you got to step it up. You got to start moving faster. You got to start making faster decisions. You got to start getting engagements more often. Um, you don't want the clock to stuck. You don't want the clock to work against you. Um, as long as we're, and as long as we're keeping our time between engagements uh, very low, the clock doesn't matter at all, right? Our game shouldn't be, you know, I've played Rumble matches where the game ends before heavy spawns. Like, as long as you can continue, and it, I've done that on Asylum because of how close the spawns are. As long as you can do that and keep your time low, then that clock is never going to be your sixth opponent. It's always going to be your friend because your opponents won't have a chance to catch up. But, you know, don't let your clock be your opponent. 
Okay, so uh, as I talked about earlier, um, for the zones you want to control, I said so you want to control B and you want to control Atrium. So let's talk about what it looks like to control either of these zones. Um, the reason I don't say you want to control jungle is for two reasons. The first is sometimes people snipe on rumble. It isn't very common, but sometimes people do it. But most people use some kind of mid-range weapon, right? So these engagements here are relatively close to mid-range, if not at the edge of mid-range. That means if we're on jungle, really our only cover covers us from half one's half a side, and then we could we have to engage the other side. Uh, but it's completely it's pretty much completely exposed to everyone that's going to be moving into these traffic lanes. We want to control these areas because basically you only want to move through jungle in order to get to one of these areas because of the fact that there's basically no cover all along here, right? There's only cover on this tree in the center with the container. So that's why we don't want to cover that because if someone spawns out here and they have a sniper rifle, they could potentially just pick us off. Whereas if they spawn out here and we're covering an atrium, they have to move all the way into cover and in close quarters where we can easily shock on them. Same thing for B. Okay, so let's cover Atrium first. When we're in Atrium, uh, there are a couple common areas where you can hide out. There's behind the pillar in the center, the kiosk in the center. There's on either bench here. And then there's these corners here. Uh, the safest location are these corners here, especially, especially as a shotgunner. Because there's no real way you're going to get cross-fired without seeing someone come around the corner first. Even if they come around this corner, uh, C Atrium, even if they come around C Atrium and you're all the way in this back corner, you're going to see them first. No, Most people don't expect you to be in this corner. Um, this corner of the environment here pretty much will shield you if you're all the way to the right. So they can't see you at all. And you can just step out and challenge with primary. And then if it gets too hairy, you can move back into cover. All you really need to worry about is getting grenaded when you move back into cover. But when we're in Atrium, where are we looking, right? So if you're a sniper, you have really nice sight lines up either side of B. So that's one location you can look at as a sniper. Um, another location you could look at as a sniper is either entrance to the Atriums. It's a lot easier to cover C side than it is A side, which means if you're going to cover C side, you likely want to be on the right side of the kiosk to, to have your back covered. From anyone pushing through atrium if you are going to cover a atrium obviously we want to put our back on the other side we want to minimize uh the crossfire that we're going to receive obviously in this in this particular situation if someone's on b they can crossfire us from this distance but for the most part in rumble the chaos is going to cause a lot of people to go up here into these areas here so most people aren't going to hang out on the railing to try to pick you off in Atrium. They're going to be too busy dealing with people pushing up these stairs and up through jungle and out through hallway and back through ninja to really worry about you in Atrium. So this is, while you could potentially get crossfire, you don't normally need to worry about that. Same thing if we're a shotgunner. If we're hanging out in these corners, we get quick pushes onto either side of the Atrium. You get quick pushes around to the entrance to jungle. And then the final location you kind of want to hang out in is um, if you're a hunter, you can, I'm pretty sure you can only do this with bones. Um, but on the perch, there's a window here, right? There's a big window. It looks like this. And in it, there's a little crack, right? There's a little section of the window that's cut out. You can jump on that section. It's about here. And if you jump onto kiosk, you can, as a warlock, you can float or as a titan, you can jump all the way up to hang out on this window. So what does that do if you hang out on the window? Well, first of all, you can't do it very often because you are exposed um, to crossfire, especially if someone expects you to be up there. But if you do hang up on, go up there, you basically cover um, all the way back here, all the way out here, cover all of Atrium, right? But you also cover all the way back on these sides and then out into the jungle and straight below. So this location is really powerful if there's no one coming into Atrium and they're all going to be. 
you can basically take out your primary or if you're if you're a sniper you can take out your sniper and you can challenge someone from this distance but again don't do this like non-stop because then someone's going to expect you to go up there and it's really easy to get sniped if they're just hanging out on b um, this is also a really good spot if you want to challenge this heavy back here Sorry, back here because you can jump off of the window and just death from death from above straight down um, if you're running striker titan i always recommend you run death from above because you can't do do this play with your super um, if you're not running death from above you'll fall short you'll you'll end up about halfway into the atrium here that's bad because you're not going to kill anyone and they're going to pick up heavy and immediately kill you so what about b well b we have a lot more options for where we can hang out but we're also getting pushed from a lot more angles um that's because anyone can basically go down to this lower area and come up through stairs and we also have to worry about anyone moving through jungle that wants to challenge these railings. So whereas Atrium, it's very telegraphed and where they're going to, excuse me, where they're going to be pushing from. So it's pretty easy to tell if someone's pushing from jungle or around A Atrium or through C Atrium into the center area. Pretty easy to tell when someone's coming there, right? It's not so easy always to tell if someone's actually pushing up the railing or they're going all the way through to stairs. If they are going through the stairs, do we waste valuable time searching for them on the stairs or are we trying to reposition to deal with them when they come up? If we are in this position, where can we potentially be crossfired? You know, maybe we were gonna get crossfired all the way down, uh, down jungle near Bravo spawn. There's a lot more you need to keep track of. So you have to be a lot more mobile to cover B. But the advantage of covering B is a lot more people go to B. Not very many people go to Atrium compared to B. Most people will spawn in these locations. And their first inclination is to run straight ahead, right? Well, what's straight ahead when you run, spawn in these locations? It's going to be B. So if you know that people's inclinations are going to run straight ahead off spawn, then you know they're always going to be coming right at you. And you can adjust accordingly. And you saw he had a really nice spot... Uh, ad tenant had a really nice spot inside here because anyone that was decided to push up the a stairs he was ready for with a shotgun and you saw that quite a few times and then again if he's in this hallway and someone's out here on uh on balcony near near ticket booth and he has nice slides into them to deal with that it's really nice to cover this this hallway and this box's area if you're a shotgunner because everything is a choke point right even the distance between from the back of the hallway all the way to A stairs. It's within primary distance with any primary. An auto rifle, a hand cannon, a scout rifle, a pulse rifle. These are this is all good distance for that. It's a little long for say a last word, but this is a fine sniping lane as well. But what if we're not a shotgun or what if we're a sniper? Well, if we're a sniper then uh, we have to be very careful about which angles we're actually looking at. Normally on Rumble, you want to pick the angle that's that most of the people are going to show up in, right? Uh, so the most predictable areas are A stairs and then boxes stairs. So that means that we just need to post up on the opposite side. And if you've played Trials on this map, you know exactly where those locations are. It's over here by these boxes, right? So you can come here and then... From this location, you can cover anyone in the back ninja, or you can come up, cover anyone coming in through to the main door through the hallway, right? And then on the other side, you can just go on the railing here. That's going to cover this into boxes. If you want to take a riskier shot, you go out here in the open. That's going to cover all the way back into stairs. Remember that stairs is a head glitch, so you want to be aiming just above the stair level, because most people are going to try that head glitch. They're not going to change their elevation. They're not going to go all the way to the top stairs. They're going to just peek just enough so they can see you. And that's always going to be a head glitch. So if you keep your reticle, um, let's say, let's move this real quickly. All right, so these are the stairs, right? If you know that the person's going to be standing here on this third step, then just their head's going to be shown. But that means when you're out here on the balcony and you're looking down at them, 
you want your reticle not to be where you think their head is, which is likely here, right? It's likely all the way back here. But you want it to be very low on the edge of the stairs, which is going to be right here. Now, smarter, smarter uh, players will move up and down to change their elevation so that it'll result in your shot being a body shot, which is fine too. Uh, if they're stupid, they'll double peek and you can just pick them off again. And if they're smart, they'll run away and then you don't have to worry about that angle anymore because they're likely going to get picked off. But as long as you aim low on these boxes here, you'll be fine. And that comes with experience. Some people don't know that. Some people don't know that if you just aim low there, you're likely going to get a headshot. Other really nice spots to snipe, um, if you go up onto this balcony by the TVs here, you can see down into Atrium. If you go onto this box here, next to Ticket Booth, again, you can see down into Atrium, but you can also see all the way across. Um, a really nice spot that I like going to is actually there's a, there's the, you see the railing here, right? And there's a box. Well, you can actually jump on the other edge of the railing and you're still up on top. You're still on B level, but you're just to the right of the railing. And that actually lets you see inside of C here. This is a really nice angle on, uh, trials, on threes, on rumble. So let you see a lot more. You're a little bit more exposed, so it's a little bit riskier of a play. But most people don't expect to be sniped all the way in back C from someone near Tick Booth. So this is a nice, nice spot. And there's two other spots I want to briefly mention. Um, they're a little bit more advanced, but if you've watched Ninja with Noel or if you watched Dr. Lupo play with Ninja with Noel or Ramblin', there's some wires that are here, right? And there's some wires that are here. They're really high up. The way you get to them is you go from these stairs, this raised area, and you jump all the way up on top of these wires. The wires are very high. So let's say we're on a wire on either one of these sides. So what does that actually do for us? Well, if you're on these wires, you get full vantage points all the way across the map right all the way across and anyone pushing down into the jungle is basically dead meat also most people don't even look that high they're gonna look you know straight ahead they're never gonna see you on these wires up top just like the window in perch though these locations you can't always go to because once someone expects you to go up there you're basically a sitting duck because there's absolutely no cover even no cover to drop back into you have to drop back around, and it takes a while to get back over there. So if someone does expect you to get over here, you can't really think about what you're going to do. You just need to move away, because you're going to be dead very, very easily. And it's very easy to snipe someone that goes up there. But, uh, most, like I said, most people don't expect you to go onto those wires. So you're always going to get at least one good kill off of it, if not more. Um... In a rumble match, you could potentially get a lot just because there's five different people in the game. You kill one person, maybe that one person expects you to be there, but the other four to probably don't. So you can go there, you know, two, three, four times in a row, kill everyone, and then never go there again. But you're, you know, you get a free four or five hundred points. That's obviously best case scenario. You know, that don't take my word that that's going to happen every time. But even if it's nets you one kill, that's one kill you likely wouldn't have got otherwise for free. All right, so that's all I have for you guys uh, today. Um, Thursday, we're going to be going over some of my own gameplay. I'm going to be taking a little break from submissions because uh, I'm going to be going to PAX this weekend, so I want something a little bit more low-key. Um, I haven't decided what I want to show you guys, but it'll likely be a sweat to show you kind of how I play the game. I know some people have been asking, you know, when are you going to show me your stuff? When are you going to show me how you play the game? So that'll be coming up. It'll be a lot more recent stuff, you know, within the last uh, couple of weeks, if not uh, last week. Um, depends on what I want to show you guys. Um, I won't show you a stomp, but I will show you a game where, you know, uh, I did well 
so I can so I can explain to you um, my mindset, you know, what I'm thinking about and what I'm trying to do. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, feel free to leave comments or whatever you want. Um, email me your submissions. Your submissions are always I'm always taking submissions at keen at cruciblebootcamp.com. Um, again, no sixes. So rumble trials, skirmish, salvage, uh, elimination. Any of those are a okay. Um, when customs come out next month or private matches come out next month, uh, I'll probably be getting uh, supremacy, um, three v three supremacies. So that that'll be very interesting to talk about because it's definitely a different dynamic with kill confirmed. Uh, and if you want to support the show, patreoncom slash bootcamp. You can go. You can sign up for tutoring sessions. Those are all going to start. Um, signups are going to start on the first. So if you sign up soon, then you'll be guaranteed slots, and I'll have all all that information. Um, once uh, the month turns over. So I've been your host, King Koala. This has been Crucible Bootcamp, and class is dismissed. See you guys later.